So you see people talking about or taking N-acetylcysteine or NAC on Instagram reels and YouTube videos, and you've always wondered if it's something you should do, what it might do for you, or is it all just a bunch of hype? I'm Dr. A, and I answer questions like this. So NAC is a really popular supplement. It is N-acetylcysteine. Cysteine is amino acid, and it is a sulfur-containing amino acid. So if you ever buy N-acetylcysteine and you smell it, it can smell sulfury or like, you know, like eggs or something like that. So that's the first thing. It's used in our body. Cysteine is used for many, many things. And it is also a amino acid that is studied a lot in medicine, partly because N-acetylcysteine in 1962 or 63, I think, became an official FDA-approved drug. And the original drug was called Mucamist. Now it's just called N-acetylcysteine because, you know, that's 63, 4, 5 years ago. So we'll talk about why it was a drug, but that led to its use in a lot of study around particular uses for N-acetylcysteine medically. The other thing is it has really enjoyed this sort of resurgence in research in other parts of medicine over the last 20 years, but especially the last 10 years. So I want to go through the top five ways that N-acetylcysteine could be beneficial to the human body, and it might be considered for a treatment protocol and a addition or adjunct to a treatment protocol, et cetera. Number one, these don't go in any particular order, by the way. Number one is it is a primer for phase two detoxification. So your body, the liver, but also other places has a phase one detox, phase two detox, and then there's the eliminatory phase three detox. Phase two is really important and it has multiple pathways. One of them is fed by cysteine. And the reason it's fed by cysteine is it it is the phase two pathway that is run by glutathione. And glutathione gives a conjugate with toxins through the binding together of glutathione and the toxin through the glutathione S transferase system to move that toxin through the body and help it be eliminated. Cysteine is the rate limiting amino acid to make glutathione. And there's two other amino acids as well, but cysteine is the rate limiting one, the most important one. And so number one is priming the glutathione pathway to do something that we call mercapturation. A mercapturate is simply a toxic intermediate with glutathione stuck to it and it's sent out of the body. So that's number one. Number two is another phase two thing where you prime again glutathione, but glutathione then goes to another phase two pathway called glucuronidation. Glucuronidation is super important because this is a pathway through which we detoxify lots and lots of substances. Glucuronidation can get backed up if we overdose on over-the-counter medications like Tylenol, acetaminophen, toxic mushrooms plug up the glucuronidation pathway, lots of stuff. Well, glucuronidation is supported by many, many things, but glutathione directly triggers the glucuronide formation, which runs glucuronidation. So again, cysteine. Without cysteine, we don't make glutathione to run that. So two phase two detox pathways, one and two. The third is the reason why N-acetylcysteine was approved as a drug all of those 60 plus years ago, and that is as a mucolytic substance. So the drug name used to be called Mucomist, and that was used in nebulizers. So you're in the hospital and your mucus secretions are getting sticky. They could run it in through a nebulizer to help to clear those out. It's a mucolysis, a mucolytic substance like NAC, literally causes the sticky protein parts of the mucus to get easier to get rid of out of your body. It also works through intravenous means or oral means, and it can be given in all three ways, but it is a mucolytic. Now, to be a mucolytic, let's say you're all plugged up and you're wanting it to help you out, you need higher doses. So the mucolytic doses, if you're taking it by mouth, can be fairly robust. You can be looking at one or 2,000 milligrams three or four times a day before it really does a lot of mucolytic effect. If you're doing it through through an intravenous application or through a nebulizer, the doses can be much lower to reach a mucolytic effect depending on the way that it's being used. But number three is as a mucolytic substance. And
And in case you're wondering, N-acetylcysteine as the supplement or N-acetylcysteine as the drug, it's the same molecule. There's nothing different between the two. Now, I said it has had a, a big upswing in research in certain parts of medicine in the last 10 to 20 years, but especially the last 10. And one area is in the neuropsychiatry world where N-acetylcysteine is actually being used in moderate to high doses, so 1,000, 2,000, up to multiple thousands of milligrams in anxiety, depression, even schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, et cetera. And there is good research in the psychiatric world about its use either as an adjunct or as a primary treatment, as a starter treatment for a lot of these areas. And of course, there's other areas as well, but a lot of people don't realize that it's being used in psychiatry the way that it's being used. So that's number four. And then number five is in your whole body. So now we're not just in phase two detox anymore. In your whole body, all of your cells have a primary antioxidant defense that includes three players. Those three players are two water-soluble and one fat-soluble nutrient player. The fat-soluble is actually vitamin E, like Edward. And remember, fat-soluble vitamins can build up, so we don't want to take too much and all of that, but it's there for the fat membranes. And then there's vitamin C, which is water-soluble, and humans don't make vitamin C, so we have to eat that or take it as a supplement every day. And in the middle, then, is glutathione. And remember, N-acetylcysteine cysteine is the rate-limiting amino acid to make glutathione along with glycine and glutamine. Now, I'll just throw this in because people will always ask, what about glynac, which is glycine and N-acetylcysteine together? So that's a looking at two amino acids together, right, called the dipeptide, right? So if you take glynac, that can increase your glutathione levels rather rapidly as well. Originally, the research showed that NAC or Glynac both would raise your levels. There wasn't a lot of like head-to-head -head studies. Now there are some, and it looks like if you want to go to the expense of taking Glynac, that's just fine because it's going to raise your levels and might even raise it faster than NAC. NAC is still going to raise your levels, but body-wide antioxidant defense function is the other reason that NAC of the big five can be used. All right, I'm Dr. A. Hopefully that answers the question. And thank you so much, all you subscribers. Please do subscribe if you haven't. It doesn't cost you anything. Like, share, comment, do all the stuff. And then take a look at some of these videos we'll put up here at the end. Check out the main channel and I'll see you on the next video.